everyone and welcome back to Drilla's Garage. I'm going to start working on the safari car, the new safari car at least. I, I already did a video on this car, kind of the introduction video. So I got started already. I didn't film this part because I don't know, I just grabbed some tools and started working on it. But uh, let me show you what I got going on here. So let's say today's Monday, Friday. I, like I said, I just grabbed some tools. I started taking apart the front suspension. I uh, figured the easiest, uh, that'd be the easiest way to do it. Uh, so I got the tie rods here. I'm going to have to modify these and put some uh, some ham joint type, a spherical type um, uh, ball joints because I need to flip them over to reduce bump steer as much as possible. And uh, and that's it. So I already took the struts out. I took the whole assemblies out on both sides, as you can see over here. They're both out. And I need to take them apart to get them modified. So what they'll do is they'll take the spindle here and drop it, and that will automatically raise the uh, the height of the car. So that's the plan. That's why I got them both here. I still have to take these apart. I got to take all the the brakes and everything off, and uh, and get these things re-indexed. Usually pe people raise them to lower the car. I need to lower them to raise the car. It's counter counterintuitive to what most people do, but that's what I'm doing. And here we have both front struts disassembled. Brakes, rotors, hubs, bearings, backing plates, etc. So like I said before, this guy, it sucks to, get, to hack these up. These are brand new struts. But anyway, um, I need to lower them just about above the hole where that pin goes. And that's going to give me about, I don't know, an inch and a half or so. Of clearance and then it's just a matter of bolting it back up re-indexing the torsion bars and it should be good as far as the front end goes although like I said I will have to redo these uh, these tie rod ends that cannot stay like that because if I I mean you know I can't no matter what I can't flip them around because it's a conical you see that it's like a cone so even if I flip it around it's gonna be upside down so Regardless, uh, those need to come out. So what needs to happen here is the spindles need to be dropped on the strut. So basically what I did was I grabbed the grinder with the cutting wheel. I cut here and here, move this down. Now I need to clean up. I need to move it down more though, but I need to clean up all around and, uh, and, and have it welded. So that's where I'm at. It kind of uh, sucked to hack up literally brand new struts these struts are a few months old but it is what it is so that's where i'm at i i'm uh, continuing with this one i already got one side cut i need to cut the other side move them down clean them up all the weld spots and go ahead and get them welded uh, i already got them all apart as you can see so anyway never mind the uh, the mess here it's an organized mess as i always say and then next, I will need to start working on the rear. Uh, what I'm going to do in the front is I'm going to go back and watch the videos of the last safari, get the angles of the, uh, the control arms so I can re-index the torsion bars and have them set up the same. I've already ordered the tires. I actually ordered a bunch of parts already. I'm just waiting for them to arrive. Actually, the tires arrived already, but they're at my house. I didn't bring them today. Uh, and then that way I can go ahead and get these wheels uh, swapped out. Uh, these tires are like brand new. They only have maybe, I don't know, 1,000 miles, 2,000 miles on them. Uh, they're Michelins. I'll put those on another set of wheels, uh, but I'll reuse the, the, the Fuchs. The good thing is they're Fuchs 16 by 7s all around, so that makes it a lot easier. And uh, once everything's kind of back together, I'll start doing some body work here, clean this up, also the other side, to, to a certain extent. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not really too worried about the cosmetics on this car. It is going to be a safari, you know, ish car. So it's going to get banged up anyway. Another thing I need to do here is measure these rear shocks. Uh, the reason is since the car is getting lifted, I need to get some shocks that are longer. So basically, I know KYB has a vast assortment of different size shocks. So what I need to do is measure the overall length. I'm, I'm not probably not these specific ones because I'm pretty sure I have another set laying around. So I need to measure the inside diameter of this hole, uh, this diameter here, this guy, 
and the total length and then I need to increase it by uh, I don't know probably three inches four inches or something like that look at that it looks red I got the GT3 over here reflecting the red into the car I assure you this car was never red <laughs> but anyway um so that's the other thing I need to I do need to order shocks I have not ordered them because I've been waiting to get those things measured and today is the day I decided to go ahead and index these torsion bars, or this one actually, not the torsion bar, the control arms, I mean. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do is, you see this one's at 25, I'm gonna put this one at 25, which I think it more or less is, it is. And then I'm going to put uh, this adjustment thing here that I took off of here, more or less at the same level as that one, that way the two uh, front control arms will be more or less around the same place So I wasn't really planning on doing this today, but I figured I might as well, you know, and that is Taking this rear uh, suspension apart. It's kind of a pain. There's a lot of different attachment points here But uh, they need to come off. So I'm gonna start by removing the sway bar first I already started here uh, get the sway bar out completely uh, then I need to detach the shock and then I need to start going ahead and taking these guys off and these guys off and uh, I gotta get this uh, I don't know what you call this a spring plate cover whatever this thing is called here uh, take that off that way the spring plate will hang in its natural unsprung position and I got to get that to 45 degrees like I did on the other car so that's the plan I'm not gonna film it because there's no point it's just you know, removing these bolts. These I'm gonna loosen and I'm gonna put it. You see how you see that gap there? I'm gonna put, that, that means that this bolt is on the top of that slit. So I'm gonna put them in, I'm gonna put it in the middle. I'm gonna try to get it as neutral as possible. But these two come out, these two come out, and then I gotta deal with that. Okay, so here I am in with the back suspension. Uh, I've already done the other side. This is the second side. This is the driver's side, you can see. It's at 45 degrees exactly, as was the other one. So now I just need to uh, tighten everything up, put this back, up, put it all back together, basically. Uh, it's not really anything worth filming. It's just uh, me putting a bunch of screws back in. I got to put those two, these two, and this one's already tight because I had to tighten, I had to adjust the, uh, the angle. Uh, I need to put this back on, put that on, and, and tighten this guy here, and that's it. So no sense in filming all of that. But it's coming along. Rear suspension is almost done. Then the only thing is, like I said before, I need to order some shocks that are slightly longer. Uh, these will work, but they'll probably bottom out. They won't give me much droop. So when the suspension goes down, I might bottom out and I'd rather just get some longer shocks. Uh, I already measured. I think I need them like three inches longer. I already took all the measurements of the other one, you know, with the holes here and this and the whole thing. It's all ready to go. A few days have passed since I last worked on this car. The last thing I did was re-index the, uh, the rear suspension. If you, uh, you know, last clip of this video, it's a, that was like a, I don't know, a week ago or something like that. So moving right along, parts have come in and let me show you what I got here. Tires and wheels. These are the same wheels that were on the car. Uh, these are two, the other two are over in the back there. Uh, these are the... BF Goodrich uh, KO2s, excellent tires. Fortunately, the car came with a square set of 16 by seven inch original Fuchs, so they're gonna look perfect. All right, moving along, the skid plate. This is the Renline skid plate. All I did was take it out of the box. I haven't even checked to see what's in here. I guess some kind of hardware or something, I don't know. I'll have to look through there and see what all is uh, involved in that. In order to put the skid plate on, I have to take the AC condenser off on the front of the car and the protective bar, which I'm not gonna use anyway. I'm not putting AC in this car, so out. The shocks. After, I don't know, a long time on the computer, I finally found the shocks that are going to work for this car. So these are KYBs, and these are actually, off of a 
early 2000s Ford F-150 and Ford F-250. Right now they're compressed because they got this band on here for packaging, for shipping. But these are about five inches longer than the originals. And not only that, but they have another five inches of travel as well, of, of, of stroke. So these are gonna work perfect. Like I had mentioned before, I had to get the whole, you know, the diameter of this hole, this thing here, although the outside diameter wouldn't really matter. And the mounting has to be the same. So this comes with the, the, the grommets and all that stuff. So this will be a direct bolt on and it'll be the right size, uh, the right length, better said. The struts, I ended up doing them myself. I was gonna send them away, but basically I showed you before, I caught them, I had a friend weld them, and they are ready to go back on. You can see the difference in the height. That's probably, what, an inch and a half or so, just from lowering those, uh, what you call it, the spindles. In here, hold on, as I was saying, in here is the RS prop rod for the front bonnet. I'm going to need it for when I put the light pod on the front of the car. It weighs the bonnet down considerably so mechanical struts won't work. And I'm personally, I'm sick and tired of changing those things. So this is a forever solution. The other thing I was mainly waiting on were these guys here. These are Renline. Uh, these are the tie, tie rods for the bump steer. This is their bump steer kit. It comes uh, basically ready to go. All I have to do is just screw it on. And that's what I was waiting for mainly to put the car back there. Well, that in the rear shocks. Well, in the front, in the front, I guess, everything. Anyway, um, that's what I was waiting on. So the idea today is to go ahead and put the car back together and hopefully get it on the ground. And then I'll need an alignment. Oh, and there's one more thing. Okay, so actually, no, I was wrong. There's three more things. Mud flaps. I need to go ahead and bolt these on. These are a little on the flimsy side, but I guess they'll do the job. If they end up not working out that well, I can just get some thicker, uh, you know, some thicker material and just cut them out. But I can use these at least as templates. There's four of them here, but I, I think these will work just fine. In this box is a roof rack that I got off of Amazon. I think I got these on Amazon too. This uh, I got on Amazon. This requires complete assembly, so I'm not gonna deal with this just yet until I'm ready to, you know, unless I'm, until I'm ready, until the car's running and driving, that's not top priority. And then the other thing is, this is the TRE racing, whatever you call them, um, light pod. So I ordered it, I only ordered the shell. The reason being, is that I have from the last Safari, the crash one, I have this guy here. Now granted, it's missing a light, so I'm gonna have to get a light and I'm gonna have to get the mounting ring too. So my idea was to use this thing here on that one. And uh, again, but this is not priority right now. Besides, I have to find another headlight like this one or just a matching set. It doesn't matter if I get one or if I, if I get two. The mounting ring, I think, is going to be my, uh, you know, my challenge, but nothing that I shouldn't be able to figure out. So that's it. I'm going to now change my clothes and get working. I got to put this car back up in the air. First thing I'm going to do is those rear shocks so I can get that out of the way, and then I'll move to the front. I'll go ahead and get the struts installed, the tie rods in, and start the assembly process. And you know what they say, assembly is the reversal of disassembly. So it should be pretty straightforward. So let's, let me get, let me get work, uh, work clothes on and get working. You can see here the difference in the length of the shocks. Let me get my measuring tape out here. And uh, let's see, let's take this nut off here. So I'm going to measure, let's say from here to here, right? And it's about eh, four and a half inches, give or take. 
So this shock is about four and a half inches longer than that one. The more important thing is this one has a much longer stroke. So I think I'll be fine. This is limited anyway, because this little thing right here, this little space or whatever you can call it, is what limits the downward travel of the spring plate. So it cannot go any lower than that. So again, that's probably about a few inches lower than normal, which is what that would compensate for. So let's get those new shocks put on here and let's see how that goes. All right, I got the shocks in on both sides. So next is I'll put the sway bar back on in the rear here. And I think that should be about all I need to do to the back and then go ahead and put the tires on. I'll do that last though. But uh, yeah, back here, I think I'm pretty much done other than the sway bar, which is super easy. Just these uh, little brackets right here, the, the drop link, and that's it. I am very happy to start putting parts back on this car because there's parts scattered all over the place and uh, the shop is a mess. Not that it isn't always a mess, but it's more of a mess now with all these parts everywhere. So can't wait to get back together. Moving right along. The next thing that needs to happen is I need to put these tie rod ends on here and I need to get the struts reassembled with the parts that are over there on the table. Uh, that's gonna be super easy. You just stick it in there, you put the pin in there and uh, that's about it. There really isn't much to it. And then I'll go ahead and get these installed on the car so that then I'll, I'll put the wheel, I mean the brakes and the hubs and all that stuff after the fact. I was gonna do it before, but why have all that extra weight on there without needing to, so. That's next. These are the Renline Bump steer kit is what it's called. They're kind of expensive, but there's not as, they're not as expensive as other ones on the market. They look to be of nice quality. So we'll see, and they come with their little boots here, the dust boots, so uh, let's see. I'm gonna get those put on the tie rods. And that's it, start assembly. Okay, so check it out. I got the tie rod ends on, I put the rubber boots on. Those gave me a little bit of a, a fight, but I put some dish soap on them and they slipped right on. I got the bump steer things on. I have the angle of that tie rod more or less even with the angle of the other two cars that I have of this here. <clears throat> I, uh, I kind of just eyeballed it. So regardless, the car needs to go for alignment and I'll see what happens after the alignment. Same with this side. It's all done together. And basically I'm ready to start putting the backing plate, the, uh, the rotors and the hubs and everything the calipers hook up the brake lines and uh that's it once i have the hubs back on i'll put the wheels on put this thing on the ground see what it looks like moving right along i got this side done the only thing i have to do is bleed the brakes that's it uh, but i'm going to do the other side now and uh and bleed everything at the same time i'll put the power bleeder to them and uh get those done so you can see here this side is already uh, has the rotor on it already. All I have to do is put the caliper on, hook up the brake line, bleed, and it'll be good to go. So the front is done. Everything is bled, everything is hooked up. Looking good. So the next order of business is skid plate. I'm going to remove the condenser, remove this uh, protector bar here for the condenser, and then test fit the skid plate and see how it looks, see how it fits, see where it bolts. I'm still not sure uh, how it bolts up or anything like that. Uh, aside from that, put the car down, get an alignment, and that's it. I need to put the mud flaps, but I need to get some screws or some little L brackets or something to attach them here. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna get to that today, but I do want to put the car on the ground and check it out What I can see here it comes with Two bolts and four washers. So the two bolts go in the front With the two small washers the flat the big washers go in the back which are this point right here and This point right here So that's the only places those are the only places where it attaches actually I just remembered before I do that, I have to put the sway bar back on here. Uh, I can't forget that. And then I gotta put the um, you know, sway bar mounts that go here. And I don't think I need to put the belly pan because the, the skid plate's gonna be there. So I don't think I need that. And that should be it. 
Okay, the skid plate is in. I got it a little dirty, but that's no big deal. The bolts that they sent, that they supplied, were way too long, so I had to put a spacer, a spacer, aka big oversized nut, just to space it out a little bit, uh, so the bolts uh, would would seat. Uh, the back was super easy. They just put that big washer there, and that's it. So I put the you know the sway bar is in place. I put the protective plate that goes here underneath here anyway for the fuel pump and the steering rack, so that's in place, and basically. Uh, yeah, I still have access to the height adjustment bolts. So, I think that's it. Time to put it on the, on the ground. Put the wheels on it and put it on the ground. Let's see what happens. Super excited. All right, I'm gonna put the phone down and I'm gonna put the tires on the car and bring it down. Let's see, I'm hoping the right height is good. I think it will be. Let's see what happens. Okay, so off the bat, I can see I'm too low in the front and way too high in the back. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe if I low, if I raise the front, it will even out the back. I'll have to like take a look at some pictures of the old one that I built to see how high this was, but that looks way too high. There's way too much room there. That actually looks a little better. No, but this needs to come up too. Wow, that alignment is way off. Look at that back tire. Yeah, definitely gotta go in for alignment. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. It's dark already, as you can see outside. I'm tired, I've been at this all day. The torsion bars in the back are gonna to need to be re-indexed. There's no way around it. The front I can adjust, I can fine tune with the little 11 millimeter bolt there, but the rear is just beyond uh, a simple adjustment. So I'm gonna have to take the the torsion bars out again and re-index those, give them a little slightly less of an angle. That way it doesn't sit so high. I mean, the, the rear was just way too high, so it needs to come back down. Um, otherwise, I'm happy with the progress I made today. I don't know what else is next. What, what I'm gonna have other stuff I need to get done here in the shop. So I'll get back to this pretty soon. So I hope you enjoyed it. I know the video it was kind of in two parts because I was waiting for, you know, parts to come in and all that. So finally they did and I was able to knock it out, but I'm glad I, I'm, I'm happy with the progress I made today. So stay tuned for the next one on this car because there will be another video and it, Shouldn't really take me too much longer to finish it, honestly, other than maybe uh, getting the light pod painted and I don't know. Uh, otherwise, it should be running and driving pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to put the mud flaps on. That's another thing I need to do. I also need to wait for the train. Fortunately, it goes by quickly. So that's it. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And stay tuned for the next one. Um, if you have any questions, leave, leave them in the, in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching.